we promised we will recommend something. So if this video is recent enough, uh, if it's not like five years old when you are watching it, what, what should people get? Welcome everyone. Once again, we're here at the Couch of Wisdom. <laughs> and we we gotta oh, talk about the couch, <laughs> couch of wisdom. We get it together and today we're gonna talk about the best <laughs> beginner gun. We chose this topic because I'm getting like 120 messages a day of people asking what's the best beginner gun. And I don't think there is one answer to this because there's today three answers to it. Yeah. What's your answer, Joseph? I think the best beginner gun when it comes to like really beginning today is your friend's gun. You probably shouldn't buy a new gun just to try yourself. It depends on your friend. Yeah. <laughs> if he try to get rid of his junk, yeah. it's like, I want a gun, buy my M200, it's amazing. Oh yeah, you will <laughs> be so happy about buy it. it. If you have the money, oh man, that looks amazing. <laughs> yes. Yeah, and it's, it's so lightweight. It's like twice so, the size of the yeah. other sniper rifle, it must yeah. shoot twice as far. Yeah, it tells you the inner barrel is so long, you can't miss. It's already touching the other guy. <laughs> yes. Uh, anyways. I would say that, I mean, you, you talk about borrowing, is it? What? You talk about borrowing the gun. Or do you borrowing, talk about... yeah. Okay. Oh, okay. I think it's, uh, really, you shouldn't be buying a gun just to try airsoft. And I think mm. borrowing a gun from a friend is the best way to start. I agree, I not, disagree, not, I think that. Not even renting, because rent, rent guns are usually yeah. just in a condition that they shoot. That's it. Which is normally how you buy a gun out of the box. Yeah, exactly. So but that's your actually how you should start. So you don't get a, a big <laughs> expectation. If you borrow one of my guns, you could play and say, oh, Airsoft, it's cool. And then you buy one for like 120 bucks. But I also so. think that we, we, we're getting off topic because mm -hmm. the question is, what's a good beginner gun? And I assume that the person who asks this doesn't ask, which gun of my friend should I yeah, borrow? Yeah. It's more like, I'm buying a gun for myself now. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Which one should I buy? I think we would agree that it should be an AG. Yes, I agree on that. I think no matter which field and no matter which conditions, it's always an AG. Yeah, it should yeah. be an AG. Because it, you plug in the battery, you put a high cap magazine in there, and you can just shoot. Depends, Essentially. It depends on the gun, yeah. But yeah, if it's... No, I would say if you analyze, you go extremely cheap, like below 50 bucks. Between 100 to 200 bucks, you can get the EG that you plug and play. 100 to 200. Yeah. And well, you can start playing actually. I would even yeah. say that in the AG sector from 100 to 200, the price performance ratio cannot be beaten. And I'm not just talking about how good they are to play, but also what you get in terms of manufacturing quality, how stable the system is running, how accurate it is, how reliable it is. I would even say that 150 bucks AEG is more reliable than a 150 bucks Springer Sniper. Because there's just such a big market that companies really try to make yeah. something that works. And if you have the best plastic AEG on the market, it's just, it's the biggest market and that's why people try to achieve it. And they did achieve it. There's a mm. couple of amazing products out there. Should we actually name some brands? Some brands, sure. Uh, let's leave that at the end. At the end, we will mention some brands. Some brands, yeah. Uh, I know what people recommend, but it, and I own them. But I also can judge if they're still good, if it's still hot as shit. I, mean, I have a couple. Okay. Yeah, let's let's the name end. them. At the end, yeah. we're gonna name a couple of guns from a couple of brands. Is this the end? <laughs> okay, I guess that's it. It's just my age. Okay, let's 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 do this video a little bit different. We, no, say, we now said you should get an HE. Now we're gonna tell you why you should not get a gas gun. Why you should not get a spring sniper like, rifle. Which is our first rifle and why we picked it. And why it was a bad yeah, decision. How we learned. I made it. an amazing decision actually. <laughs> so, okay. When it comes to AG. I'm gonna start. start. I'm gonna start. I always want to be a sniper. Like anybody who wants to study airsoft. And I bought myself an HEM MP001. It was a hundred bucks and it was a disaster. It was such a bad gun. It's a gun where the, bar the inner barrel is actually a brass pipe. And the hop-up window is plugged onto it and it's injection molded. So you shoot mm. from the hop-up window into a brass pipe. It's such a bad gun. There was nothing right about it. There was feeding issues. There was it wasn't shooting accurate. The cylinder head was coming off, the trigger box broke. It was a it was a piece of shit, and somehow I could make it shoot okay. This is not the reason why I'm not saying you should buy a spring powered sniper rifle, because there's good ones out there right now. But it's hard. It's really, really hard to play with a spring and sniper rifle. You're in such a big disadvantage if you don't know what you're doing. And even if you know what you're doing, you're still at a disadvantage. You have one shot, one BB. Reloading takes a lot of time. And there are a lot of AGs that and can there really is a lot of you. 
yeah, yeah, exactly. You don't have the range. You don't have the accuracy compared to a cheap AG. So sniper rifle for beginners, a cheap one, mm. I would say it's a no-go. I don't want to self-advertise, but I think the SSG-10A1 is by far the best thing you can get for this money in sniping. I put my <laughs> hand into the fire and I, I say that's 100% true, at least right now. Let's see what the market brings in the future. But still, if you can outrange an AG by a couple of meters, doesn't mean that you have an advantage. It's not mm. just about range. It's about firepower, putting out BBs as fast as you can. Because maybe you see a guy, you, you shoot, you miss because of wind or you hit a branch or something. If you have an AG, it doesn't matter. It's just and you just tilt your gun or you just correct and then you hit the guy. It's so much easier. Yeah. So spring a sniper rifle, no. Don't stop with a spring sniper rifle. Unless you really know what you want and unless you are 100% sure that's the route you want to take and you pr should probably try it before. The thing is you, you don't know if you didn't try it. And I did it this way and it worked for me. But also I was so passionate about Airsoft and I didn't have money to buy an AG after this. So I just learned to deal with it. But it shouldn't be like this. You just buy something that you can enjoy from the very beginning. What did you start with in? My first primary I got was M4 AG. Mm -hmm. I was not disappointed or amazed by it. It was a D-Boy S system. I slapped like a 30 bucks scope on it. It should all right. I mean, just but I just... Back then, didn't understand anything about it. But I did a very good decision after getting it. I managed to trade it for a WE SCAR GBBR. So your second gun was a GBBR? Yes. I already knew a lot about HPA. So I thought, okay, you know what? This seems like an interesting concept. Because the S system, I did open the gearbox and I hated it. There were no quick change spring back then. Wait, which mm. gear? Oh, of the... the which, yeah, so I basically yeah, opened it up and I just exploded on me in my bedroom and they were like, <laughs> okay. <laughs> Everybody yeah. knows this. Uh, and I was like, no, no, mm. no, this just looks ridiculous. Mm. My very first gun was actually a manual Beretta. That's a pistol. Then a gas Beretta <laughs> with the barrel that slides back. My first gun was also a manual Beretta. A plastic slider. Yeah. I had, yeah, there was actually 26 euros. Oh yeah, yeah, actually, yeah. yeah. But uh, you could cock the hammer, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Really? Yeah. It's your first gun. That was my first gun, yeah. Wow. But it was. I. I don't. Con I don't consider it. That yeah. I can call it first gun because it's not really primary. It's yeah. My a first. Any, anyways. Yeah. My first primary was actually Tokyo Marui uh, Sig five five two V three gearbox. Who the fuck owns a Sig? <laughs> Me. <laughs> Why did Let's you put a picture. <laughs> why why did you choose this? I've, I, I've never seen a Sig Airsoft in my life, I think. Yeah, that's... That was my it's like a FAMAS, like nobody yeah, owns yeah, a FAMAS. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I never saw a FAMAS. But yeah, it I, was actually the was first, first HE that hit the market. Because I went to the market, uh, to the shop, and I'm like, what should I get? And he was like, it should be a V3 gearbox. But I kind of like the P90 because I'm a Stargate guy, you know, yeah. I grew up with Stargate. Then I wanted something like M4, like. But he was like, "No, it's that's uh, not V3 gearbox. You should get the V3 gearbox." So why did like, you buy AK since you already have a? I hate AK. So why do I you have one? I don't have a real steel one. I mean, it looks I, like it's VZ58. Yeah, it it's super cheap. Anyways, doesn't <laughs> doesn't matter. I didn't want an AK looking gun, so the other option was the AK Beta, the short one. I kind of liked that. And then the only thing they had was the SIG 552. Maybe. I kind of liked it. I knew nothing about airsoft guns. So I just bought it. Yeah. Yeah. And that was my first gun. It's super complex to disassemble it. There is like a million of plastic little pieces. There is MB selector. So there is the gears oh, okay. on both sides and the connector. Wait, and... was it a Marui? Marui, yeah. You shouldn't have disassembled it. Why? Because they're amazing if you don't disassemble them. <laughs> well, I did. And it still shoots. You still have One... it? Uh, one of my friends, I sold it to one of my friends and yeah. he still has it. And it still shoots after 12 years. But that was my first gun. Yeah. And it turned out to be a good choice. The, yeah, everything was so expensive. I yeah, still remember I buying a rail. You know, I wanted the red dot. And the rail was almost as much as the as the red dot. Just I thought it was a rail was as much as a gun, which is some of the times is the case. No, no. Yeah. Uh, but it was super expensive. Everything about this gun was super expensive, like a spare magazine. It was a good choice. It's in like the you end. want you want a gun that doesn't break after fifty BBs. Mm. Get a Marui. Then I got uh, Classic Army MP5 AR15 style SRC two P90s. Then sniper rifle L96 and uh, yeah. Okay, to get back on track, we already explained why not to get a Springer sniper rifle. Mm -hmm. 
Let's explain why you shouldn't get a shotgun. It's, it's probably even worse than a sniper rifle. A shotgun has no advantage in any way whatsoever. You're not competitive in any way because you don't shoot as accurate as a sniper. You don't shoot as fast as an HE. You shoot three PBs, but in the time that you reload an HE oh, shot Lord, like... If you take the gas version, HP, you can shoot six BBs. Yeah, but that's not a beginner gun. Yeah, it costs no. like a thousand bucks <laughs> yeah. just to get it. So shotgun is completely off the table. Don't even think about shotgun. It is a fun gun. It's something that you buy on the side and you use it for a few rounds of CQP. I never bought it. I never found them fun. It just... Every word in the description puts me off. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> So, okay, shotguns, no go. What else is Let's there? Let's explain why not to get uh, GBBR, maybe. GBBR. And then I'm gonna put a little spin on it. Okay, why not to get a GBBR? I personally believe, and I know you two are not gonna agree with it, but I think airsoft equals trouble on the field. Nothing works. And I think if you put now a GBBR as a beginner into this, it's twice the hassle. And I believe you're not going to play. I believe you're just gonna spend your time fixing the gun and then you're driving home, and that's mm. it. Leaking mags and fixing guns. I actually agree, but uh, the reason would be a little bit different. It's the manipulation and knowing what to do with the gun. You know, because you have to reload, you have to charge the, yeah, the, the, the ball charging reason. handle. If it's a WE, you shouldn't be using full auto function because it, it probably breaks the gun. I'm not a fan of full auto anyways. And then there is the magazines, you have to know how to fill them. You are limited capacity, it's 30 or 35 BBs. So again, AG is in this case superior and it's just not as easy to use. But once you know what to do, in my opinion, it's superior, but not for a beginner. I do agree it's not for beginners, but for a different reason, for the price. A GBBR can be reliable, but mm. you're looking at triple the price. It's not just the gun, it's the magazines. You need the to get... The magazines are expensive, you can swap them, extra. They, they require... I, I would say a proper GBBR, the max is where you require maintenance, not mm -hmm. the gun. I mean, I knew I, what I was doing and I was prepared for it, that's why my second gun was... I knew I wanted mm. gas blowback rifles, but the AEG is just... You only have to charge the batteries. I think another issue is weight of the mags because I cannot just put them into my pocket. Yeah. Oh, true. Yeah, it's like I that's need a, a proper carrying system. Yeah, that's true. And that's expensive. Mm -hmm. So for a GBBR, you really need to be prepared for all the stuff that's surrounding the system. And you have to learn how to reload efficiently. Mm. So for a beginner, no. And when you drop a mag, it breaks your heart. Yeah, yeah. it breaks your wallet. <laughs> yeah. yeah, like I drop your phone. Sometimes I'm more worried about dropping the mag than the phone because yeah. yeah. <laughs> On the other hand, I have I have another proposal. I would actually maybe recommend starting with a pistol. Back when I started, an AP was a Sima AP was fifty bucks. It still is. And it's no, they're like eighty bucks per now. Oh. They shoot incredibly well. I think it's the cheapest, efficient thing you can buy is an AP. The magazines are small. You can carry them in your pocket. They hold, I think, up to 30 rounds mm. and they cost, I think, 7 euros. Mm. So you can buy five of them, have decent capacity and be, you can be competitive with an AP. Thing. If you don't go into too long ranges because they're weak. Yeah. Let's face it, they're weak. But if you go into like urban, a little bit of forest, I think an AP is not a bad choice. But what about GBB pistols? Because I actually think you can have a lot of fun with a pistol only. It's lightweight. You don't need extra carrying system for magazines. You just need two pouches, two extra magazines. You are fast on the field. It's The accuracy is decent. It I makes noise. I actually think that's something that is catching on because of the John Wick movies. Mm, maybe. I think pistols are too unreliable. Unreliable? Yes. It can happen that you go to the field with one pistol and you shoot like a hundred rounds. Because you shoot a lot if you do pistol mm. only. And you just... It just breaks. The pistol just stops working. There's a sear whirring. There is a spring cranking out of some position. There is a slight cracking. There is a mag leak. I think it's too unreliable. It's true that solving a problem Fixing a pistol, GBB pistol, it's not easy. That's true. Maybe it's just me because I was owning, I think, six different Marui Glocks and they all cracked on me after like yeah, half a year. Yeah, they're and they're Marui. But also other, I mean, old pistols, it's just, I mean, as a sniper, I use them a lot, I gotta say that. But still, I, I wouldn't I wouldn't go to the game, like I prepare for half a day and then I drive to for an hour and then I have a gun in my hand that's like a hundred bucks and then re I would say pistol is also not a good choice for... Uh, 
beginner. For pistol, I suppose you need to learn more about it's aiming. It's hard to aim as well. With a with a gun, you hold mm. your shoulder and you yeah. have a lot better control yeah. than your gun. I don't. That is true. With a pistol. I don't. I think yeah. aiming with a pistol, you have to train a little yeah, bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I suppose a lot of people actually buy a gas pistol as their mm. first gun. Dude. Even they, if they don't play, it looks cool because yeah. there's cycles and everything. Yeah, yeah. that's loud. Yeah. And you can like put it in the holster. Yeah. Uh, run there, <laughs> I the don't line, know about, just like I don't know about running around the pistol. I, I gotta <laughs> say that if you experience an airsoft and you take a pistol only, you're killing it. You run so fast and you just you you have like this. Okay, only have a pistol, I have nothing to lose. That's how mm. I feel, and I'm just gonna run and I kill mm. everything. And it usually pays off. Yeah, it usually it actually ends up better than not rushing and not yeah. going in there because that's what most people don't expect. Yeah, you just going there and killing everyone. Yeah, but. I wouldn't say it's good for beginners. Which okay. categories are still out there? LMG, no, because it's just like an AG, but it's heavy and there is no good, okay, I'm not gonna say there's no good LMG in the market, but there's no good budget LMG in the market. And also the part selection, it's very limited compared to regular yeah. AR-15 style or AK style AGs. HPA, not affordable if you're a beginner. Or you shouldn't, I mean, if you have all the money in the world, yeah, go for it, but also it's not so user-friendly. It's, it's not, not user-friendly. You have to build an HP. PA to some degree. Ah, you can buy you, them by now, but you, but you have to team. know what you are doing. Yeah. Don't go HP. I don't think it's a user friendly. If you really don't know yourself, don't know paintball, hmm. I would even say it's dangerous. Yeah, it's high pressure air. So yeah, if you don't know what you do, you connect the hose without the regulator or anything, it's just gonna blow in your face. Some recommendations. We promised the people that you will recommend something. Why? I think naming a, a brand is hard because it also always changes. I would say grab a full plastic AR-15 or go to a store and ask what's your best budget M4 that you have. That's mm -hmm. the best advice I can give. I would search online instead of ask a store. I wouldn't know if I go online because if you have a problem with it, you don't know where to go. No, I'm saying ask the opinion like on the internet yeah. instead of going to a store because yeah. so many stores, they have no idea what they're talking about. Do not buy an exotic gun yeah, I wouldn't buy not. a metal gun yet because you don't know yet what you want. And I wouldn't buy anything else than an HE. That's it. Mm. So don't go exotic. That means stick with AK M4. or AR-15, M4. Yeah. Anything that has cheap mags. Do not buy an L85, for example. Stay with the, the, the things that people have the most. Don't buy L85 ever. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so, but really, we promise we will recommend something. So if this video is recent enough, uh, if it's not like five years old when you are watching it, what, what should people get? I think general recommendation, recommendation right now in Europe is GNG Comet Machine, Spets and Arms, the cheap line. The Ares, Ares Amoeba line is amazing. Ares Amoeba line is amazing. I would say the ICS plastic, the ICS sport line is I think good. that's a bit expensive. They're a bit expensive, but yeah. they're good. You also have the SEMA, normal with uh, electronic trigger unit. The it's new, also plastic. The new lineup. Yeah. 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 New SEMA lineup. And I, I tried the Amoeba, I tried the SEMA, and they're actually pretty decent. Yeah. Mm. So there we go. The plastic SEMA ones, the Ares plastic ones, the GNG Comet machine, which is also plastic, and the Spetsner arms, which has a plastic body, but a metal ring. I think those are the, the best bets for now. Mm. I would say if there's a battery included with the gun, use it for the first few games until you say I want mm. better trigger response, upgrade to yeah. something better. But then I would definitely get LiPo battery with a proper charger. Don't skip the charger, just don't go cheap on, don't the, go charger. Cheap on the charger. It will serve you for a long time. Okay. I've been using the same charger for five years now. Don't go cheap on that. It will survive like five other guns that you will buy in the future anyways. Mm. Okay, that's our advice for beginner guns. Hope this was useful. I know we kind of made it like a little off topic, but you know, we just want to give out yeah, we, do this, we do this all the time. Yeah, we do this all the time. That's what it's about. This is not the quickest guide in the world. It's just <laughs> us messing around. Hope you guys enjoyed and we see you on the next one. Asked. Good. That was good. That was a lot. Mm. And it's actually fun.